So welcome to New York and to the Open Center. Um, my name is Kathy Fleming. I'm a physical therapist and I've done a little bit of everything as far as physical therapy can go from community hospital inpatient, outpatient. Uh, I worked at a state facility for mentally retarded physically handicapped. I've done geriatrics, I've done pediatrics, I've done burns, I've done a little bit of everything. I think the only area I missed was sports medicine. Um, and what got me into working with lymphedema or manual lymph drainage is my mother has lymphedema in the arm from a, um, she had a routine blood draw and um, the nurse couldn't find the, the vein so she put the needle down, went out of the room to do something, came back in, picked the needle up and tried again, didn't wash it off so my, my mom got an infection in the arm, it blew out the lymph nodes in the elbow and then in the axillary so she ended up with this swollen arm and a friend of hers who had cancer and ended up with the swollen arm saw my mother's fat arm one day and said that looks like lymphedema um, your daughter's a physical therapist why isn't she doing MLD on you so my mother comes home gets on the phone and says Kathy why aren't you doing MLD on me and I went what's MLD I had no clue so this was back in the early 90s um, so I got in contact with this other woman's manual lymph drainage therapist and luckily she was a Vater trained um, therapist and that's how I started my journey into the land of lymphedema and manual lymph drainage. So I was certified through the Dr. Vater School in Austria in 1994 and um, went back to Germany to the Foldy School, another schooling um, for lymphedema in 1999 so I'm certified actually in the through the two schools um, I opted to teach even though I got an offer to teach for the Foldy school I op opted to go with the Dr. Vader school because I sincerely in my heart believe that it is the best it's the best hands-on training this is we teach the original unadulterated Dr. Vader method of manual lymph drainage so if you want good hands, really good hands, um, this is the place to be. Um, the other training was really good. I learned a lot, but as far as um, actual manual therapy, um, I will stand by the Dr. Vader School as the gold standard for MLD. So um, I became a, <clears throat> an instructor of BASIC in 2005, and I recently got certified um, last year, I believe, 2010, in Therapy One. So what is MLD? Do you folks all know what MLD is? Aha! Okay, manual lymph drainage. It is a very light skin technique. We try not to call it massage because when you think of massage, we think of deep getting down below the fascia into the muscles. MLD is a skin technique, a very light skin technique. What we do is we stretch and twist the skin in very precise movements and very precise directions in order to facilitate the lymph vessels to draw more fluid, um, out of the tissue and into the lymphatic system. You have your heart here and then we have you know you have your lungs up here so we have blood that goes to the lungs to get oxygenated the CO2 leaves the blood vessels leaves through the lungs the oxygen comes in the oxygen oxygenated blood goes back to the heart goes back to the heart and then gets pumped out into the body and then we have larger vessels larger artery here gradually going down into smaller and smaller and down here you have the capillary bed it's the those blood capillaries is where that exchange of oxygen and co2 happens and where um, waste products um, cellular debris and all is picked back up um, through the veins and then transported back to the heart gradually bigger and bigger veins. So we have the arteries over here bringing blood um, and oxygen to the tissue and we have the veins over on this side. And the capillary bed down here is where the exchange takes place. Um, historically it's believed that what comes out um, 90% of what there's say we have 100% percent 
coming out here and it's believed that 90% goes back through the veins. So what doesn't come back, what happens to that? Well, that 10% is the responsibility of the lymphatic vessels to pick up that other 10%. So you have blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, and then you have the um, lymphatic vessels that come back and they deliver the lymph back into the veins just before the vein goes back into the heart. We call this the terminus. It's a lymph um, MLD term. It's not a anatomically correct term. It's actually the supraclavicular fossa, if you want to know the um, official name. So um, it's real important that the lymphatic system works properly in order to keep this extra fluid that doesn't go back through the veins recirculated. Uh, recent, within the past five or six years, I'd say, research has been done to show that when we are standing like I am now, that there's actually no resorption going back into the veins in my legs as I stand. So how does it leave? Through the lymphatic system. So what this, what that research showed is that the lymph all the more importance of the lymphatic system, okay? Um, what goes back through the veins is definitely dependent on what position you're in. When you're lying down, there's more blood that will, will go back in through the veins. But when you're standing right now, it's the lymphatic system that's doing it all, that's bringing the um, blood back to the heart. So MLD has an even greater importance um, to help keep things um, circulating in the body than, we, that, than what we once thought. But whatever those percentages are, if the lymphatic system shuts down, it's said that you would be dead within 24 to 48 hours. Um, so it's, it's that important of a um, function in your body. So the lymphatic system itself, where the blood vessel system is a closed loop, a continuous loop, the lymphatic system is just a one-way loop. I like to think of it as the garbage collectors. It takes up all of the, um, the garbage that um, either there's too much of it, like too much water, too much fluid in the tissue, or too, the particles that have to go back into the veins are too big, um, things like large protein molecules. So. When we have somebody who has cancer and has, say, the lymph nodes taken out, that's, they do that to stage the cancer to, to determine treatment. Um, the flow of the lymph out of the arm has been disturbed. Um, so it's um, water, protein, protein molecules, different cells, dead cells, cell fragments, and fats. These are all things that are carried by the lymphatic system. This is called lymph obligatory load. We shorten that to LOL. The first time I saw LOL, I thought it was lots of love. And my kid's like, no, mom, it's laugh out loud. Well, in <laughs> lymph land, as I call it, it's lymph obligatory load. So that's everything that the lymph system needs to, you know, to carry. Um, so if we have the lymph nodes taken out here, the transport of all of these things out of the arm is disturbed. So we tend to get an accumulation of this stuff in the tissue. Proteins do what? Proteins attract water. So if those large protein molecules aren't leaving the tissue, they're staying in there, they attract water, therefore you get the swelling. Okay, so how do we get that out? We have to facilitate the lymphatic vessels to pick up these protein molecules, and as we do that, the water follows the protein, and so we get rid of the protein as well as the water. When you go on into the further training beyond um, therapy one and basic, um, that's when you learn how to treat the lymphedema in conditions like that. And it's not just the MLD, you, but you also do compression bandaging. Compression is a very important part of that, so that once you get that limb smaller and you facilitate that, you do the compression bandaging on the arm or the leg or whatever to help um, not allow that to come back. And it's a very precise way that you wrap so that there's more pressure distally and less as you go up, so it encourages the flow up. Um, 
Okay, so lymph obligatory load. So that's, it's really important for the lymphatic system to function properly to keep all of these things uh, circulating. The lymphatic system itself is, um, starts um, 40 to 60 percent of the beginning, the initial lymph vessels lie right under the surface of the skin. And these little, so they stand up kind of like fingers. Um, so this would be an initial lymph vessel right here. And the walls of these vessels are made up of single layers of overlapping endothelial cells. So you think of a vessel with only, made up, the wall of that vessel is only one cell thick. So when you're doing your regular massage, what are you doing? It's like stepping on a hose. You know, you're squishing those vessels so that they aren't, that nothing can flow through it, right? So with MLD, it's really, really important that our, that our touch is very, very light. That's why we don't press down. We're just stretching skin. When we, do our, when we do our technique. Otherwise, if you put too much pressure on, you're squishing these guys and you're not allowing this, um, the fluid or the proteins to go in. We also have little strings attached, little anchoring filaments that attach to these, to these cells. And these are connected out into the tissue. And so when we stretch the skin, what we do is we pull we stretch the skin, it pulls on these anchoring filaments and it causes these little cells to open up. So you have the cells open up and that allows the fluid, the proteins, the cells, the dead cells to go in. And then we release our pressure and then it closes. So you get this pumping action going. So as you, we stretch, twist, release, stretch, twist, release, you have these cells open, close, open close so that allows the fluid to come in and each time you do that more stuff comes in that pushes it down to the next segment okay and then we have larger lymph vessels that are down here and these are made up of functional units that are called the lymphangion this may be getting a little too technical but um, it's good to know this stuff where these are single layer um, these larger lymph vessels are multi-layer. These do not have muscles in them. These vessels down here, each lymphangion has um, longitudinal muscles and also spiral muscles that go around like this. And research has shown that that two-directional stretch that we do with our MLD is the best way to facilitate these spiral smooth muscles. And those are the ones that cause the lymphangions to contract that sends the fluid into the next level. So when we do our MLD, we're facilitating the initial lymph vessels by stretching those anchoring filaments, causing the initial lymph vessel to open and close. And we're also facilitating these larger lymph vessels to make them contract um, more frequently than what they would on their own. If you folks are familiar with the cranial sacral rhythm, that's about three to seven, 10 beats per minute. Um, at rest, the lymphatic system is about that fast too, so it's pretty slow. When we're exercising, when we're active, then that facilitates the lymph, lymph vessels, and so they contract more, more rapidly. When we do our MLD, we cause them to contract more, more fa uh, faster, so we're helping to move fluid along more quickly, so we get it out of the, out of the tissues. Um, okay, so what does, why would you do MLD? What, what have you folks, have you folks heard of what any of the applications are for MLD? In a cancer right, right. So the lymphedema, welcome. Um, lymphedema is definitely one of the indications for, for manual lymph drainage. Um, like I said, when we just talked about this, what we're doing is we're draining the tissue. We're getting more fluid and, um, and proteins and the cellular debris to re be removed from the tissue. So in doing that, we're also cleaning out the tissue. So it's used for detox. Um, one patient that I had had the unfortunate 
um, situation where she jumped into, she was the first to jump into the pool at the local YMCA and the maintenance guy had mistakenly put in like a month's worth of, worth of chlorine versus just one day's worth. So she got a toxic poisoning throughout her whole body and her head was fuzzy. She couldn't work. She was bloated. She had, she, she, was, a, she was a mess. We started treating her, I think it was like three times a week, did work on the whole body and I forget how long it took, but she, within a very short amount of time compared to what the doctor anticipated, she was back to work, back to her job, clear thinking, um, not bloated anymore. So detox is really good. Um, it, it also has a relaxation effect on the sympathetic nervous system. So when we do our MLD, we, we do a gentle stretch, twist, release, and we keep a steady pace. So it's a slow, rhythmical pace. And in doing that, it has a um, calming effect on the sympathetic nervous system. So if you're a massage therapist and you have people who want relaxation but they can't tolerate that deep massage, MLD is really good um, to do on them. Um, often, plenty of times, our, our patients fall asleep and start snoring. They've also done research to show that 50% of therapists who do MLD on their patients, they get that relaxation effect also. So I think that's why I like it. You know, being a kind of hyper, you know, it just has a calming effect on me. So it's good for relaxation, calming effect on the um, sympathetic nervous system. It has a calming effect on the muscles. It decreases um, spasm in the muscles. So again, you have your sports people, applications for sports, um, people with, you know, the tight muscles or um, MS. Um, um, CP, you know, not that what, what we do is w we work on the symptoms. We don't, you know, cure these things, but we work on the symptoms of, of different diseases. Um, okay, so we have, it has a um, pain reducing effect also. Um, one of the important things that, that we emphasize and that Dr. Vader emphasized is that it's a stretch, twist, and a release. So there's a stretch phase, a maximum stretch phase, and then a release or a zero phase. And it's that part of the MLD that causes the pain reduction. What we're doing, you have little sensors in your, in your skin. You have pain receptors and you have what's called mechanoreceptors, touch receptors. And these two you have the touch receptors and you have <clears throat> pain receptors. And both of these um, shoot messages up to the brain and they both follow the same pathway up. But you also have little inhibitory pathways that go like this. So um, let's talk about the touch receptors. You know when you put your shirt on in the morning and you got that aggravating tag in the back? It's like, oh man, I gotta cut that out, it's really bugging me. But you get caught up in other things and by the time you get downstairs, you know, you forget that it's even there. Um, what happens is that, that that part of your body is being touched constantly. And over time, constant touch fades out. Okay, the receptors, the messages that go to the brain start getting shorter and shorter and more spaced out so that eventually you don't even feel that. Um, pain, on the other hand, goes continuously. But, so, if you're, if you, have you noticed if you're holding somebody's hand, you're going out for a walk and you're holding somebody's hand, after a while you kind of don't even feel their hand in your hand? Same thing. It, it accommodates, the brain accommodates to that constant touch. But when we do our MLD, it's stretch, twist, release, so it's stretch, no stretch, stretch, no stretch. So we're doing a constant um, um, stimulation to the brain and what that does, it ends up interrupting this constant pain signal that's going to the brain following the same track up to the brain. So it, again, being meticulous with your technique, stretch, no stretch, you get the, the pain reducing effect. 
by um, affecting the touch receptors and the inhibitory effect that they have on the pain receptors. So it's really good. It's a real, it's a light technique. Can get relaxation, pain reduction, um, muscle relaxation, all with this one gentle technique. And the fourth thing would be the immune system. This hasn't been proven, but we believe that. If you're, um, if you're working on the lymphatic system, a major portion of the lymphatic system, besides, besides having you know, these, the initial lymph vessels and then these bigger vessels along the way, <clears throat> you also have lymph nodes, right? And what happens in the lymph node? That's where our, auto, our immune reactions happen, you know, that antibodies and the antigens, the, um, the viruses and the, and the bacteria are deactivated in the lymph nodes. Um, so if what we're doing is we're speeding up the flow of lymph through here, that necessarily you would think, well, all of those pathogens that we're bringing to the lymph node are, gonna, are going to be coming into contact with the, uh, with the antibodies sooner than what they would if they were left on their own. So we're just, it's, it hasn't, like I said, it hasn't been proven, but it's um, believed that we're definitely um, bumping up the immune system when you work on um, somebody with the manual lymph drainage. We have lymph nodes, we have different bodies have different numbers of lymph nodes in the axilla, in the neck. We have lymph nodes all over the place, a lot of them in the neck. Major groupings in the armpit and in the groin. Um, we also have them in the elbow, behind the knee. They're spread out sporadically, but those are the ma in a lot in the intestines and in the abdomen. Um, you know how we talked, I talked about the lymph system being a, like a, um, a roadway? So you have, you have your lymph vessels and then you have nodes, lymph vessel, node, lymph vessel, and then you have interconnections over here. You might have this go like this, this might go like this. So there's lymph nodes all over. If a group of these lymph nodes is taken out, it's like if you're on the highway trying to get through the toll booth and the toll booth blows up you know, everything is going to back up from that point on. So it's not like some things may get through, but in general, the lymph will tend to be slowed down. Some people can have a lot of lymph nodes taken out and never get lymphedema. Some people can have one node, that sentinel node, taken out and still get lymphedema. There's really, they haven't figured out a way yet to determine who's going to get it and who isn't, but it's a disturbance, it's a disruption in the flow. And that can come from surgery, it can come from an accident. Um, um, exercise definitely helps um, lymphatic flow. So people have had a stroke, you know, and, and become paralyzed. You see that, you know, the swollen arm, you know, or the swollen leg. Um, so does, does that, yes, that, does. that help? In, um, when we do MLD, in the basic class, what you learn is the normal pathways. So there's specific pathways that the lymph takes to get out of the body. So we have what, what's called watersheds. There's, they're kind of imaginary lines that divide the body up into parts between body territories. So we have watersheds. Um, the belly button that goes around here. We have one at the collarbone that goes around. We have one up the front and in, in front and back, in the middle front and back. So we're talking skin now. The skin drains from midline off to the side. So above the waist, um, the normal pathways would drain up to the axillary nodes. The arm would drain up to the axillary nodes. Legs drain up to the inguinal nodes. Butt comes around, drains to the inguinal nodes. From the waist down, the skin drains down to the inguinal nodes. So those are normal pathways. So we have these um, axillary nodes taken out because of breast cancer. So now what happens? Some people, their arms don't blow up. Why is that? There are alternate road routes in the body already that the body will naturally um, start to use. So the deltoid, muscle up here over the shoulder, 
this doesn't drain to the axilla. It drains directly to the terminus here that goes directly back into the vein. So when we're, when we're working with somebody with lymphedema, what we do instead of bringing all of this up to the armpit, we channel it off to the side and bring it up through the deltoid which we know avoids this area and goes directly to the terminus. So that's, that's what you learn in the more advanced courses, how to deal with that.